My name is Dio and welcome to my channel. Today I'll tell you everything that you need to know about enlightenment. How does it happen? Whom does it happen to? Where does it happen? Everything that you need to know about enlightenment, I will tell you everything about it. Basically, I'm going to take away the cuteness. Yes, the cuteness out of the concept of enlightenment. Enlightenment is something that is so profound, so powerful that can help an individual and from that individual a lot of help can come to a lot of other souls in a human forms. This enlightenment has in today's time become something about being very, very like let's go experience it. It's like let's go to Disneyland, let's go to your theme park. This has a lot of meaning behind it. Every soul needs to be freed from the cycle of birth and rebirth and for that enlightenment is extremely important. We'll talk about a few things related to enlightenment and we will use Gautam who in today's term we know in today's world we know him as Buddha. We will see him as Gautam. Buddha happened later on by his followers but Gautam is the one who had experienced enlightenment and today let's hold him as an example since he is a poster boy for enlightenment and I will tell you how once your enlightenment happens it can be used against you and from you that miss enlightenment like I call it the conned enlightenment can reach a lot of other people and not benefit anyone in fact become harmful to a lot of other people who need to be freed from the cycle of birth and rebirth. Enlightenment, let's simplify it. What is enlightenment? Enlightenment is always seen as something that you were not aware of. Now you are aware of it. So you are watching your favorite special effects film and now behind the scenes you've gone and seen how the effects are done. That being, how was it created? That set, that entire beautiful place which was another world altogether, how was that created? It's an illusion but yes, how was that illusion made? That human being arm which was an arm of a lizard and his entire body was human. That arm basically had certain sensors on it which on CG which is computer graphic. They created that lizard arm and that's how it's done. Once you see it, not read about it, not hear about it, not be hypnotized about it. Somebody's hypnotized you to believe in it. Once you experience it yourself like right now you're experiencing this video as real as that. That is what enlightenment is. Once you experience that. Then you start passing on the message of what you've experienced, telling others also about it. Who does this happen to? Which soul in a human form has this experience? This happens to souls who have done various, various cycles of birth and rebirth and have now gathered all that intelligence of taking this body and having that experience. Once you have an enlightenment, you think you will not go through the duality of this realm you will you will definitely go through everything you will have to pay your bills you will fall sick you are definitely going through a breakup my friend you will experience everything the only thing is after this you will free yourself from the cycle of birth and rebirth if you are not conned into the other side of enlightenment which i will tell you further ahead once you free yourself from the cycle of birth and rebirth the next time you will have a choice to come back to this realm and when you come back you will only be passing on that message of enlightenment, of freedom, what you need to do, how you need to do, what happens beyond in full awareness that this is what I'm here to do. Till then, till then even that stage of life that you are in where enlightenment happens, this is how this realm is. You will not know what you are here to do. You will go through a lot of things to figure that out. Brahma, the creator of this realm will try everything in his power to make sure you don't succeed. This world that you are living in, your body, your life that you experience is Brahma's world. It knows exactly who is coming in it and to do what. Today you come inside my house, I know exactly who you are and what you are capable of doing. Brahma was absolutely aware of that energy, that soul, that powerful source of energy which entered Gotham's body. So he made sure it entered in a in an environment where he would be extremely shielded from everything that would make him curious. So he was born to a very rich king. That king was overly protective about him, didn't want him to see suffering, didn't want him to see illness, didn't want him to see death, didn't want him to see spiritual practices being done, otherwise he would have been curious. Once you are curious, like I tell everyone, I tell a lot of my clients, always be curious to know more. Then answers come in, bigger truth come to you then, which is going to lead you to a better understanding of this life and then beyond also because soul experience happens. So this 
soul in Gotham's body was completely shielded. 29 years old, he was 29 years old when he first figured out what is death, what is old age, what is illness. He stepped outside. We all know the stories. I won't get into the story where he saw an old man and he asked his chariot rider who he is and that's how he started getting his different answers of what illness is, what death is, what suffering is. In one of these trips, he saw a man sitting under the tree. The sadhu was sitting under the tree and meditating. He said, what is he doing? He was given that information that he is gone beyond this world. That means he is now at a stage where he can see things of how things are working around enlightenment behind the scenes of this realm, this illusion. Like I said about the film, this illusion when you step out of it and you see it yourself, okay, this is what karma is. This is how karma and destiny are used to keep us trapped in the cycle of birth and rebirth. I've made videos talking about it. Feel free to watch it. Once you see it yourself happening behind the scenes, okay, this is how we are trapped. When I say we, I mean the souls are trapped in the cycle of birth and rebirth. Ah, enlightenment. Okay, these are how many lives I myself have lived. Various different genders, various different nationality, various different experiences. Okay, now I have realized what I'm here to do. Enlightenment. Let's start talking. This is what happened to Gotham. This is how he got his enlightenment. Once he figured all these things out, he went on his own journey. When he got his enlightenment, he got all this knowledge of what is happening behind the scenes so that now in this lifetime he can start telling people about it. But before he could tell anyone about it, guess who comes in front of him the minute he got his enlightenment? The owner of the house. The owner, the creator of this realm. Brahma comes in front of Gotham saying, great, you've got your enlightenment. I'm very proud of you. But you know what? Nobody's going to listen to you. Nobody's going to understand all of this, what you've got, because what you have is extremely profound. Special people have it. They will not understand. I will tell you what you need to tell them. Can you just, just think about this? You have figured out how to free yourself from a prison. You're going to tell the fellow prisoners how to get out of it. But the minute you've understood this, the jailer, the superintendent, the, the one who controls that prison, has created that prison, comes to you and tells you, great, I'll tell you what you need to tell the rest and how you need to tell the rest and whom you need to tell the rest. This is why after getting his enlightenment, the first person that Gotham wanted to go meet and teach was the one who taught him how to meditate. The one who gave him all the understanding and practice of how to reach that stage. He wanted to go meet him and teach him the same thing. Doesn't that say something's gone wrong? Various different monasteries have their various different stories to it. Like I said, so now Brahma's come. Let's say in front of me now, even if Shiva comes in front of me and tells me that, you know what, dear, nobody understands when you talk about the matrix and freeing it and the cycle of birth and rebirth. Stick to the mudra part, mantra part, manifestation part. People love that. I'm going to know that's Brahma come in Shiva's form to mislead me to my purpose. This is what I tell a lot of people when they tell me also that, you know, nobody's understanding it. You stick to the mudra mantra part of it. No, people need to know about it, whether it is their time or not their time. One individual person can make a lot of difference. That individual person could be watching that video. This video goes out to him. Who cares? One watch or 20 watch or 20,000 watch. It doesn't matter. This knowledge needs to be given. Whether it's your time or not, it could be somebody else's time. Why should that person miss out on it, right? So now, like I said, Buddha's entire enlightenment, has it got conned by Brahma in a particular way? Where now, let's say, there's this very famous, very famous image of Brahma, of Buddha sitting, of Buddha sitting in his meditation form under a tree and there's this hood of a serpent king is how they call him, serpent king over him. What was he doing? There are various different monasteries, but the basic crust of their stories of every Buddhist follower will be, it was raining and the serpent king decided to come and shield Buddha from rain. You got to be kidding me, man. That serpent king, the Nag, the beings who are helping us have spoken about them in various videos of mine. Feel free to watch them. These are the guys who are providing mankind with everything that we are surviving on. Food, water, oxygen, materialistic things, metal, name it. Everything that human beings are surviving on is coming from the ground, including oxygen, water, food, everything. Think about it. So from rain, he's going to come and protect Gotham? No. 
these beings these nags who are helping us with a lot of intelligence it is their intelligence in us this is why it is a kundalini snake i've made a video talking about it feel free to watch it after watching that video a lot of people come to me say we want to meet that being that you've spoken about i've described him in that video really well this is when i tell people look you have to be of certain importance will you right now in this physical form your mayor or your minister or your prime minister president of your country will want to meet you you have to be a certain importance right where they say okay let's call so and so let's meet them so these beings know exactly which soul has come in a human form how powerful that soul is all the knowledge we give this soul is going to be passed on let's let's help this one so when gautam was sitting over there it was under their guidance that he got his enlightenment that is a way a very profound way of saying that shesh nag the the king of these nags took gautam under his hood like we say we'll take this person under his wing we took so and so under our wing it was under his hood under their guidance it's a very famous picture of buddha pointing his finger down touching the earth again lot of different stories he was calling the goddess of the underground to protect him and whole lot of other thing but again it was pointing on the ground that means all the knowledge he is getting the help he is getting the support he is getting is coming from the ground is coming from the ground so this is where a lot of a lot of enlightenment of his for fellow people fellow souls in a human form has got messed up because right now if we only start connecting with these beings that okay i'm here to learn it may not be my time to be enlightened but guide me more guide me more guide me more okay help would come but now if you think a serpent king came only to protect him from rain will anyone want to connect with that serpent king relate to it where their dna is here right now the language i speak and the sound that is coming words converted into your brain right now is making us call this a language for you and me to communicate is also coming from them can you imagine how important those beings are for all of us but we've turned that king into somebody who's only come to protect him from rain so let's stop disrespecting him whether you're a buddhist or you're nobody or anybody let's start giving them the credit for it so now when i spoken about importance of hair how important our hair is how to tie our hair i've made a video on that i've spoken about i've given an example of of buddha also where buddha has his hair in top knot all his videos you'll see buddha with his hair in a top knot the importance of that top knot where a lot of people have said no those round round things over there are snails some have even said it's an african hairstyle because buddha was from africa most of the people will tell you you know what buddha was feeling very hot so the snails came on top and shielded him from heat to cool him so that he can sit there and meditate you got to be kidding me this is why i said let's see him as gautam will that happen with gautam no that's a very profound way of again saying slowly but steadily enlightenment happened so miscommunication if it was also taught the way it happened all of us would be patient with it all of us would be patient with that enlightenment we wouldn't be sitting over there like, like i want it now when you want it right now it's never going to happen it's never going to happen but this is how that enlightenment got conned into everyone else believing another story altogether today everyone who is a buddhist is bald when buddha himself knew the value of long hair watch that video of mine every buddhist is is bald a shaved head you shave your head because okay now it's a new beginning a new understanding all together this is why in our culture when a child is born a baby is born they shave their baby's hair off so that all the past knowledge can be gone and new life is here so new new information can come in because hair is seen as antennas if buddha had that value buddha knew the importance of it why are all the buddhas still shaved okay i can understand if you've just joined and you're trying a new beginning you shave your hair but then why are you not growing your hair you ask them that don't ask me that in the comment section you go ask them that they will have a various different thing oh but we have given up our material things buddha never gave up his material life the poster boy of enlightenment the poster boy of giving away materialistic things he never gave up anything he had a very very powerful capable wife looking after his kingdom does anyone talk about her does anyone talk about the sacrifice she made so that this this soul in that form human form could go and do what he needs to do no but like i said again that enlightenment got diluted got got conned into now everyone believing okay spiritual path means materialistic things are not good material things should not be they become a hindrance in your life and food oxygen water everything is what this material world offers give up everything 
So Buddha did not give up anything. Now when Buddha, we think that he gave up everything, we are suffering over here, trying to give away all things and move away from things, live a quieter life, but somewhere or the other, you are in a different world. You tell me if Buddha in today's time, if Gautam in today's time was here and he had YouTube, he had Instagram, he had knowledge available like this, you think he would have left anything and gone? No, he would be sitting here and getting his knowledge like you guys are getting. If he had your channel, you think he would have left? No, jokes apart. You know, times were different then. You had to go meet a guru outside. You had to go travel. Today, gurus are here in our palm. Right here. So he did not leave anything. His wife was looking after. So you need not leave anything. You can learn where you need to. But like I said, enlightenment got conned by who? By the one who appeared in front of him. Brahma. It's Brahma's world. This is what Brahma does. This is why. Now you know why a lot of gurus who when they start off, they start off really well. They're giving the right guidance, they're teaching the right things. But soon after that, something goes wrong when their followers start increasing. When their name starts spreading all around the world, this is when Brahma will say, okay, now it's time for me to mess around with him. This is why these gurus who have the best car, the best house, the best bike, the best holidays, the best clothes, the best of everything will tell you, no manifestation, you should not manifest. Never manifest anything. Why? Like I said, now they're not in their control. Brahma is controlling them. There's some of them who are great, but the minute Brahma sees that, okay, their followers are increasing, he could spread the word and he could now do the things that he's supposed to be doing. These gurus will start saying, I woke up late, so today I have come late and I've told the son that I have woken up late, you come out late too and the followers clap. Followers are like cheerleaders. They're like cheerleaders. This is why I said, let's not call him Buddha, let's call him Gautam. So this is how somebody's enlightenment can get diluted, can get polluted, that truth. I've always said this, always said this in my videos, when you need to be pulled down, spirituality will be used. Spirituality, spiritual practices are a part of this realm which is controlled and governed by the one who has created it, that is Brahma. We can only manipulate it. We can't break it, we can't fight it, we can't defeat it. Our gods who are here in a human form couldn't do it. We won't be able to do it too. So the message needs to be spread across quietly, slowly, one step at a time, one step at a time. Manipulation is the right word. Spiritual practices are all manipulation of this body into achieving something that we want. So will it happen for you? Probably in this lifetime, no. Probably yes, it will. But like I said, it takes various different lifetimes for this energy, this battery to become intelligent to now say, okay, I want to do something more. I've seen behind the scenes. Next time when I come back, I will come back with my full awareness. No matter what Brahma throws at me, I will still stick to what my job is, is to free souls from the cycle of birth and rebirth and make them extremely powerful till the time they're here in a human form. That's the truth. If you like this video, give it a like, subscribe to my channel. Until I see you again, have a good life. Namaste.